Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 6, Episode 16, The Times They Are a Changeling. Oh, uh, well we got our Changeling episode, kind of. <laughs> uh, also, Sasami-chan is the commenter who said this, that I predicted the future. I'm like, not really. We kind of predicted it slightly differently, and we kept basically saying in every episode so far this season, where are the changelings? <laughs> yeah, basically we wanted to see the changelings again in more than just a cameo in that wonderful Slice of Life episode. Oh, hey! Just thinking about that could actually make that episode canon because it could be this particular changeling because he was walking all over the place. Yes, it could very possibly have been Thorax, but if that's the case, how did he manage to be there openly? Because people didn't freak out that much in that episode. Mm-hmm. This episode just wasn't quite what we were expecting. I was, like, hoping for an episode like this, but more of Queen Chrysalis herself interacting with someone, but it's a good start. Though I think Thorax is a... Thorax is a, uh, abnormality? A, um... Anomaly. Anomaly. There's the word I was looking for. And the changelings, because he doesn't seem to have a hive mind connection like they do, because the rest of them seem to be all working directly underneath the queen's orders and probably even maybe, you know, hive mind connection. But he seems to be completely separate because the rest of them are like, Queen Chrysalis, and he's like, oh, she scares me. Yeah, pretty much. But, you know, you kind of have to start small. It's not the season finale. If we're going to convert Chrysalis... Maybe now that Thorax is learning about friendship, we can have that huge thing for the finale. And Thorax goes back to the Changelings to share this wonderful information, and they pretty much tear him apart. And if this wasn't a kid's show, probably literally, not figuratively. Mm -hmm. uh, because I have a feeling the rest of the Changelings wouldn't even get the concept. Like I said, I have a feeling the rest of them are quote-unquote normal Changelings compared to Thorax, who's an abnormal Changeling. That's not saying he wouldn't get some of the other ones, so he may end up getting some other changelings that are a little bit different just like him to interact with everyone, and then eventually something? Or maybe we'll get a truce out of this? I don't know. Well, the thing is, if the changelings could generate their own positive emotions, they wouldn't have to feed off of everyone, and they would have a steady food supply, and they would no longer be feared. And they could actually help Equestria because they could pinpoint locations that were very low in love and friendship, kind of like a secondary table tree castle map, and people could go see what's going on there. Because Thorax was drawn to the Crystal Empire because of the crystalling. So I have a feeling we're probably, if we are going to get Changelings as the season finale again, it would end up at the Crystal Empire. Yeah, I think it would kind of have to be at the Crystal Empire because... That's where Thorax is. That's where the Princess of Love is. That's where the most love-infused alicorn in apparently all the history of Equestria is. <laughs> well, she is the, I almost said, goddess of love. She is not Aphrodite. <laughs> yep. Though I should check the internet. I'm sure somewhere there's a gif of Princess Cadence to the Hercules Very Bad Cartoon Series music that played whenever Aphrodite showed up. That just basically says Aphrodite like six times and ends with the goddess of love. Uh, yeah, she's the princess of love, which a lot of people in fan fiction equate to being the same thing. And I'm sorry, that's not the same thing, especially since Aphrodite wasn't female. She was a hermaphrodite. <laughs> Though there's probably fan fictions out there of that as well. But moving on! <laughs> well, people are kind of into that kind of thing. We're supposed to be talking about episode 16, not a rule of the internet. <laughs> I was just about to swing it over your direction and ask what your nitpicks were, and then I was going to go into mine. Because I kind of liked the episode, I just had issues with the pacing. <laughs> It was way too fast. This needed to be a two-parter, at the least. I liked what you said earlier about it would have been really nice if 
Thorax and Spike could have run into each other at the start of the season, and then it was more of a secret over this whole time, and then tied in more to the season finale, or even at this particular episode, so that we had more build-up. Mm -hmm. More time for them to actually get to know each other, more time for actual friendship to happen, more time to slowly reveal the story of why Thorax is different. And every time I say Thorax, I keep thinking the Lorax, but that doesn't really work for this context. <laughs> no. Thorax is just an insect body part, and since the changelings have that pony-slash-insect hybrid look, obviously he should have a name that goes something with insects. Mm-hmm. So, may as well go into detail about your nitpicks, and then I'll go into detail about mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so definitely pacing. Also, everyone's so worried that Spike, Starlight, and Twilight may not be themselves when they first arrive. Why is no one double-checking anyone when they come back? Why are they so certain that Spike is still Spike? When Spike came back from meeting with the Changeling, which, if Thorax was an evil changeling, hmm, let's see, Spike had everyone split up. If you're separated, then any one of you could be replaced by a changeling. So why did no one double-check the guards or Spike? So if we're so worried when everyone shows up, why aren't we rechecking them any time they've been off by themselves? If you have a single changeling, a single changeling is going to get a single victim by themselves and replace them. If Thorax had been evil, he would have done that to Spike in the very beginning. Also, it's a rule in these kind of situations that if someone can appear as anyone in the group, you don't split up the group. Ever. So that was a very bad idea, Spike. I get that you're not used to being in command, but that was a bad idea. Mm -hmm. Though it did give the opportunity for the whole scene where he runs into Thorax. Though that also would have given the whole opportunity for Thorax to go, I'm Spike! Oh, Thorax was already playing at I'm Spike. <laughs> yeah. But with only Spike around. But if they'd all been together, the guards would have took off, they have longer legs, Spike trips and falls, Slips is in imminent danger, Thorax saves him anyways, it still could all play out the same. It just would have been more believable. Number one rule in horror movies, never split up the group. That's pretty much a rule in D&D, &D too. Try not to split up the group. So, going back to uh, the Slice of Life episode, where there is a changeling openly sitting there in the Ponyville Church, or City Hall, wherever the wedding was being held, we didn't see a huge freak out there. I know the Crystal Empire is a little more sensitive because their rulers were, you know, kind of very much mishandled by changelings. But still, and also, if this was an issue in the Crystal Empire, why wasn't the Crystal Empire sending out notices to, you know, the other ruling bodies in Equestria, or to neighboring allies like the Griffins and the Yaks, or the Buffaloes? You know, if you have a dangerous creature lurking around, don't you want people to be aware of that for safety's sake? Also, why was the train still running to the town if everyone is so scared? Good point. And they're so worried. You know, train gives opportunity for new people to come into town, which would be easier to impersonate, especially strangers. So you would think if they were that freaked out, they would have stopped the train from running. And we were almost to the end of the episode before Twilight and Starlight were like, aren't you guys going just a tiny bit overboard? Which would have been a good spot for it if this was two episodes. But they basically got to suggest the idea right before Spike has to win it in one song or lose big time. Speaking of that song, what did you think of it? I enjoyed the song. I... I actually like Spike singing. I don't think he's had a full song, but we've heard him sing before. And, you know, it was very full of pathos, and you could see the audience weakening just a little bit. The only problem I had with the song overall is some of the lyrics. I was like, that doesn't quite work. I think the song was written when the script wasn't fully done yet, because there's some parts that didn't quite fit for me. Like, can a changeling change? I'm like... I get what he's going at, but that changeling already changed, so he didn't change in this episode. 
Actually, he never changed because he was always a, you know. <laughs> yeah, he was always, you know, not a bad guy. So it was more, can't you guys get your mind to change your perception about changelings? He's asking them to change their mind about changelings, not that, not them to believe that a changeling can't change. Right. So the episode may not have been finished yet, but it may have been more of playing to your audience mm -hmm. because I think they would have had a harder time with, what do you mean he's never been anything other than nice? He's a changeling. Mm -hmm. As I started saying it out loud, I also realized it could also mean, can't you believe that changelings as a whole can change? Because this one's mm -hmm. different. Yeah, so he could be pleading for the whole species, even though he's only friends with one. But, you know, it's going to be kind of hard on Thorax to be the only changeling that anyone likes. I mean, that's got to be worse than being the token male in a girl series. <laughs> you probably have more? Uh, or should I move on to mine? <laughs> oh, a little bit on Thorax's behavior. I mean, why impersonate Spike at all in the first place? You're a changeling. Can't you just turn into a rock or you know, a drift of snow or an icicle or something. Speaking of which, it is confirmed in this episode that changelings can change into inanimate objects, like a rock. Yes. So they literally can not only be anyone, they can be anything. The real question is how long can they hold an inanimate object as a changed form? Because, you know, breathing and... Yeah, but the question I have overall about changeling form is... How much of, are they actually changing, or is it more just an all senses illusion? Mm. So they actually transform into Spike, or is the changing an all senses illusion that makes him look like Spike? If you actually reached out further than Spike's dimensions because Thorax is larger, would Thorax still be there but invisible? You know, we don't really have the mechanics of how changing works. Mm -hmm. And another thing just hit me right now is I think they portrayed him as more male, but wouldn't change if they're following the bug order anyways, wouldn't changelings and drones like him be female? Depends on what insects you're looking at, because if you look at bees, you have drones and worker bees and drones are male and worker bees are female if I have my terminology correct. But it's the female bees that do all the work. The male bees are basically just around to ensure the next generation of bees. And a lot of insects don't necessarily have a gender. There are some that simply reproduce asexually. But Queen Chrysalis, by the name, so using human interpretation, is female. But we have no guarantee that that's what that means in changeling culture, though I'm sure the show didn't get that complicated. Because it just hit me, it's like, wait a minute. In hive minds, it's usually a lot of females, and every once in a while there's a male and a new queen, and those two take off and start a new colony. Yeah, well, you know, theorizing again, maybe that's why Thorax is different. Maybe most of the changelings that were hatched were female, and he's the odd male. And the odd male would have to be able to feel affection in order to be with a queen to start a new hive. Hmm. Theories abound. <laughs> yes, because they haven't given us enough changelings. <laughs> uh, as I asked before, do you have more or should I go into mine? <laughs> All right. Well, I was more building, got sidetracked on a lot of things. So we touched on why didn't they check the guards and Spike when they came back. Also, even if Crystal Hoof was Spike's friend, wouldn't you try to check out anyone entering the palace? Even if they were coming with someone else? Because, hello, Spike was with Twilight and Starlight, and the guards still wouldn't let them in. So how does Spike just get to waltz in with another pony that mm. no pony's ever seen before? And I know they're trying to show, you know, easy path to friendship, but, you know, that whole any friend of so-and-so is a friend of mine, that, I always disliked that phrase. I mean, 
You can be willing to be accepting of someone if they're a friend of a friend, but didn't we prove back in the episode where we first met Maud that just because you're both friends with the same person doesn't mean that friends of friends will get along? Also reiterated in the second gala episode, you know, Discord, Smooze, um, oh, I'm forgetting your name, Fluttershy's friend. Treehugger. Yeah, Treehugger. So Fluttershy and Treehugger are friends. Discord and Fluttershy are friends. That does not automatically make Discord and Treehugger friends. You can be willing to extend hospitality and extend kindness, but do you really take friendship that lightly? I mean, Spike's initial offer was good. You know, it's like, well, I'll be your friend just because sometimes people need a friend and helping him be around other ponies and trying to get him integrated was all very kind. But the wholesale, okay, everyone in the Crystal Empire is now your friend, cut to the credits, a little overdone. Yeah, that's actually one of my final nitpicks there in that particular scene is I'm okay with Twilight and Starlight Glimmer doing an almost 180 there because Twilight's the princess of friendship and Starlight Glimmer has gone through a similar situation. Meaning like I've gone from evil to light kind of thing. So I understand those two all warming up to the idea quicker, but I had issue with both Cadence and Shining. I can understand if they were like, we'll give him a chance and end it with that. But the whole, we're friends, here's my baby. Nuh uh. <laughs> no, that is a changeling, and that is your only child. And even if he's not evil, you just barely met him. Do you hand your child to almost total strangers? I hope not. Especially when you've been afraid the whole time that the changelings might be after the baby because she's such a potent source of love ever since the chrysalis. So if Thorax had actually been managing to fool everyone, this would have been an awesome moment for him to grab Flurry Heart and run. Which actually would have been kind of awesome except for the whole, okay, the changelings are all evil. You know, I would have been okay with Cadence kind of putting up in front of like, without the whole baby thing, without going... Okay, we're friends now. If that happened, I would have hoped that Shining would have been like, Okay, I'll give you a shot. But remember, if you do anything, I'll squish you like the bug you are. Yes, because those are my girls that you're messing with. My wife, my daughter, and my little sister. I will kill you big time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to reiterate, Shining, that's your wife, your daughter, and your younger sister, all making friends with a changeling. Someone needs to be reserved. You were the head of the Canterlot Guard. Please be reserved. Mm -hmm. That's the real only problem I had with this episode overall is the god dang pacing. <laughs> yes, the wholesale of, okay, our ruler said that we shall be friends with this changeling. Let's all cheer. It sounded a little hysteric to me, and something about the animation on the ponies didn't seem quite right, but it may have just been because they were crystal ponies and their eyes are different. So any other nitpicks, or should we start to wrap things up? <laughs> Let's go ahead and start wrapping things up, because I think I pretty much hit on all my major ones, mm -hmm. and I've kind of lost my minor ones in my side theories and alternate endings, etc. And I've had on most of mine when you brought up yours because we ha had very similar ones. I just had to say that particular one at the end. It's like, God, you did really? Really? The 180 on those two? Really? This entire time they were like, no, Changeling's bad. And now they're like, oh, Changeling's good. I'm like, even if Twilight says so, you two should still be like, I have a grudge against these people who tried to destroy my life. <laughs> yes, because one of you was kidnapped and discarded and the other one was enchanted into... Basically drooling obedience. Oh wait, didn't he get married later? Not much difference. Ouch. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> I'm sorry, it was funny. <laughs> it was, but it still hurts a little bit. Ah, oh, okay. Well, overall, I liked the episode. It had some good points, but the pacing was crud. The song was good. I had some issues with some of the lyrics, but... Overall, good episode. It would be like, if I was going to give it a number, I would say 7? A solid 7 out of 10? 
Oh, I'm glad that we got more than a changeling cameo, and we actually have some story development here. Yay for getting back to the Crystal Empire, yay for finally getting changelings to have more than a cameo appearance. Boo to the pacing and the lack of care and the total 180 of everyone in the entire episode, but I'm glad for Thorax. And this is another miracle because it was another decent slash good Spike episode. Who knew? Apparently the writers of this season. <laughs> <laughs> well, they do have a lot of new writers and staff. I don't know if this was one of the old writers or a new writer. I really got to pay attention to those credits more, but it's more like, I gotta watch the episode. I enjoyed it. Okay, here's my thoughts. <laughs> oh. Wow, I have no idea whether that reminded me, but the part where Spike was falling and sliding, the music that they played right there, reminded me very much of music from Nightmare Before Christmas when Jack is out with his skeleton reindeer. I listen to that at work a lot, so I do actually know that. <laughs> uh, well, I hope you enjoyed our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 6, Episode 16. The times they are a changeling. Thank you for listening. If you've enjoyed this, please subscribe. What's one more channel on your account? If you enjoy Lux's art, you can find more on DeviantArt and Tumblr. If you really like my art and want to support me to continue doing it, you can check out his Patreon or check the link below for commission availability.